This week, Ubiquity has launched Unify Protect 9.5, so let's take a look at it. Here on the website for Ubiquity's current releases, we can see they've added Channel AI. This uses neighboring AP signals to optimize channel distribution designed for controlled, very high density deployments where external interference is limited. So this gives you a visual map of the insights for your access points and what channels they're on, allows you to automate optimization to ensure balanced channel usage. And you can see here the firmware that is required. We can see this image here shows all of the access points and all the channels that they are on in activity and the amount of clients. So I went ahead and updated my Unify network application to the latest. I had it set to the official channel and the update wasn't there. So I selected release candidate so I could actually download it. So here we are in the interface. After the update, I'm gonna to go to settings and then Wi-Fi and then down here, channel AI. So we'll click to configure. So after the update, it's showing my access points are offline. I'm currently on the Wi-Fi, so they're working, but it's showing that they are offline. And we can see here, they're still adopting. Um, and it says device unreachable. So after updating, they're just stuck adopting. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is stop and start the Unify network app. After about uh, three or four minutes, we are back up and running and the access points now show online and we're gonna go back here to configure. So now we can see the access points there. I've only got two. We've got the hall and the kitchen and we can see the channels that they currently are on for five gigahertz. We could see the data usage, signal and clients. So if I come to optimize, it says using neighboring AP signals to optimize channel distribution. Okay, so on five gigahertz, it says uh, there are no improvements needed. So everything is good there. We can see the current clients that are on this AP. So what's interesting about this is we can see here on the Hall AP, the data usage, average signal strength and clients for the five gigahertz channel. Kitchen AP has no devices on five gigahertz, but I know at least three or four of these that can do five gigahertz. You know, this Apple TV, it should be on five. So that's interesting because like the Hall AP has a good mix of 2.4 and five gigahertz. What I don't know if this is software related or if it's because these are older access points. These are AC lights, which are about six years old. So these are currently in my house. Uh, I definitely have an older setup, but so far Ubiquity has still been supporting the older equipment. So that's nice for me. I don't have to um, spend the money upgrading. Moving to 10 gigabit networking would be awesome. But for right now, this is what I have. So five gigahertz was optimized. Let's go to 2.4. So now we can see they're both on uh, channel six, which is not good. My house isn't very big. So we don't want both of these taking up that channel six on 2.4 gigahertz. So let's go ahead and optimize it. So optimize based on current interference and usage, channel AI recommends applying the following optimizations. It wants to move the hall AP from channel six to 11 and the kitchen AP from six to one. So let's go ahead and apply those changes. If I hit apply, it's gonna knock all the devices off that are on the 2.4, but that's okay. So it's gonna send that out to the access points. It doesn't show for their provisioning. Okay, there we go. So hall AP just switched to 11 and kitchen AP just switched to one. So that took, I don't know, maybe 30, 40 seconds for them to switch over and all the clients reconnected. They're still only connected on 2.4 on the kitchen access point. So we can see here it made the change to the radio so instead of it saying auto, it changed it to channel one. And five gigahertz, it stayed on auto. Okay, that's channel AI. If you have a bunch of access points, it'll be even more useful for you because you'll be able to see every channel that you're using and the average signal strength and just so much data here in this channel AI feature. Next, they added 
Wi-Fi multicast filtering in VLAN bridging. So enhances Wi-Fi performance by allowing selective filtering of multicast services to reduce unnecessary airtime usage. Also introduces VLAN bridging, enabling multicast proxy between VLANs for Wi-Fi clients, Wi-Fi bridging. We can see you're able to bridge different VLANs together. So let's say you want guests on your network to be able to use AirPlay for your Apple TVs or your uh, TVs that have AirPlay built in. You can bridge those two VLANs together and select which devices can be on those VLANs. I think this is really cool because you can open up different VLANs to talk to each other in certain ways, meaning devices can talk between VLANs, but you can also have other devices on those separate VLANs that won't talk to each other. That's a pretty cool feature. Next, improved port manager. Port AI anomaly reporting, gain deeper insight into port health with anomaly detection and scoring. It'll be able to tell you if your cables are bad, if there's low power, if there's a network loop. You'll be able to see enhanced port details, port status at a glance, activity logs for anomalies, events, and admin changes, and a Mac table displaying currently connected devices. So let's take a look at that on my network. If I come here to ports, we can see the switches that I have here. Currently there are no anomalies. If you had an issue with cabling or a cable is plugged into two ports on your switch, you'll see the anomalies start to populate here to let you know something is wrong. If I come here on my Flex Mini to this port, we can come here to the activity log. We can see cables and powers, excellent. Network loops and storm controls, excellent. Broadcast and discovery and traffic path health, all excellent. Now we can see the activity log. This is my Xbox, and we can see when it connects, disconnects, and how much data it uses every time it does that. My Xbox is currently on standby mode, so it'll connect to look for updates, and then it will disconnect. Here's another one. This is a computer on my network. Everything is excellent. And we can see activity logs here for how much data it's used. Below that is my 16 port uh, PoE. And this is the link to my old USG gateway. We can see here, everything's excellent. There's no activity log for this. Uh, I think it's because this is an old gateway. Here, port two is my cloud key gen two plus. Everything is great there. And we can see all the activity logs there. And finally, they added default security posture settings. So this introduces a global default security posture with options to allow all or block all. Selecting block all will isolate all newly created VLANs, Ethernet port profiles, and devices by default, while existing configurations remain unchanged. And here we can see a list of improvements, a list of bug fixes, and additional information about this release. Something else they touched on in the blog post is about uh, roaming and Apple devices. So it looks like they have improved the connection for Apple devices. Before this in Unify Network, a good amount of times I would see MacBooks or like Mac minis They'll be connected to Wi-Fi and it will show the connection as poor, even though they have great connection, there's nothing wrong with them. So it looks like they've improved that uh, technology that detects the connection for Apple devices, but also they've added stronger roaming and device association, a faster, more reliable association, smoother roaming transitions between bands and access points, and enhanced compatibility and targeted feedback for Apple clients. So that should improve that a lot. In the past, some Apple devices like iPhones would hold on to an access point longer than they need to. When it came to roaming, the phones would hold on to the access point they're on for too long. And then they would get so far away from the access point that you ha don't have any data throughput. Well, typically in Unify, you would have to lower the signal strength of the access point just for Apple devices. So I'm glad that uh, this is being changed to where the devices will roam more seamlessly. So there we go. That's Unified Network 9.5.
it's a small update, but has some big content to it. The channel AI, I think is going to be very useful. This is currently an official release, but I had to change my cloud key to release candidate to be able to get to it. And so they're rolling it out gradually over time. If you have any comments or questions about this update, please let me know down below. I appreciate you all checking out my channel and I'll see you on the next one.